and then it's independent. It's a separate components one to another, which do one thing well. Uh, and then it's increased availability and resilience. And because it's polyglot, it's easy to change the technology stack. You can write with Java, Python, Go language, or any programming language that suits your flavor. And then uh, you can reuse the services as well and easy to deploy. The benefits of having microservice architecture is the agility that you can uh, create a new features of your applications. And it's flexible scaling because with one microservice, you can only scale that particular microservices without having to scale all the large block applications. Okay, and then it's easy to deploy because it's independent, right? And I love this one, technology freedom. It allows me, you developers out there to build things based on their needs. And we can reuse the code again and this resilience. So to think about it, containers as actually a perfect fit of microservices because it makes service simple to model. The application and its dependencies are packaged into one image. If you use Docker, you can use Docker file. And it supports any app, any language. And, and this is the best thing. With the traditional approach, without containers, we have a tendency to be dependent in the source code. But when we're using containers for microservices, that we move the, all the source code and we build one image of version artifact that you can uh, be stored in a repository just like your source code. And this image you can test and deploy in several environments. Let's say that you have a staging environment, UAT, or even production. You only need one single image container file, and you can run it to each environment. And containers also simplify the development. Stateless servers are natural with Docker, and each deployment is a new set of containers. And, and it's making it easy to decompose applications because Every microservice is self-contained. So, uh, and it also decreases chance risk. If something bad happens, you just simply roll back to one that particular microservice. Only that, only that microservice. So, uh, now we've already uh, talked about microservice and containers. I'm going to share about containers on AWS. So, how many of you here are using Docker? Okay, nice. I can see the guy there using Docker T-shirt. How are you? Okay. Um, if you are really familiar with Docker, uh, you can use Amazon ECS, which is a highly scalable, high-performance container management service that supports Docker containers, and it enables you to easily run applications on a managed clusters of Amazon EC2 instance fleet. So, uh, to ensure that we can support every workload, we've provided containers running on Amazon ECS, a deep integration with the breadth of AWS platform features and capabilities. Like, uh, it's integrated well with uh, CloudWatch, auto-scaling for cluster and task, uh, support uh, load balancer using ELB, ALB, or e NLB. Uh, it integrated also with IAM roles and security group for tasks. Uh, with ECS, Amazon ECS and auto scaling, customers can run applications that can grow to support cloud scale applications. So uh, this is uh, a diagram of what ECS is. So ECS is actually built on a fleet of EC2 instance. This is cluster that you, you define by yourself. And within the cluster, you build a fleet of EC2 instance in which you want your containers run. 
So these containers, we, what we call as task and service in Amazon ECS. And in each EC2 instance that runs your own uh, container applications, it has ECS agents that helps you to uh, manage the engine. And then it can have the key value store as well. So, and I also have the integration with the load balancer. So uh, when it comes to Amazon ECS, if you use ECS, you can find that actually it's a built-in all you need to scale applications using containerized with Docker. But how about Kubernetes? I know uh, a lot of uh, our customers also are running Kubernetes. And this is really interesting. I took this survey from CNCF, uh, 2017 survey, that shows that 63% of Kubernetes workload run on AWS. Okay, so uh, this is a really fascinating fact. And in fact, we listen. And that's why uh, last year, during Rain Fair 2017, we've built Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, or in short, Amazon EKS. Uh, so as you can see here, it's with EKS, the complexity of standing up your own Kubernetes control plane is really simplified. Let's say you want to deploy containers in different availability zones. You want to deploy in availability zone one, availability zone two, and availability zone three. All you need to do to manage it is only to connect to my cluster .eks.amazonaws.com. So it makes really easy that your worker nodes can check into a cluster and you can in still interact with your Kubernetes cluster through the tooling you already know and familiarize with. Okay, so, but there's also a lot of feedback from our customers because they have already been using containers a lot and they want to use only this container so they can enable or uh, focus on applications. So we took this feedback and we have worked hard over the past year to build a technology that works with Amazon ECS, which allows customers to focus entirely on your applications and work with their applications directly at the container or task level. Okay. So Last year, also during the event, we announced AWS Fargate. Okay, Fargate is a service that you can run containers without managing servers or clusters. I'm going to show you the difference between the EC2 launch type and Fargate. The benefits of using AWS Fargate is there's no instance to manage, and it's built on test native API with a resource-based pricing. So uh, imagine that you have a, a container image, and then you want to deploy it on, your, uh, on Fargate. You only need to deploy your containers. And because it's a fully managed service of a Docker uh, of Amazon uh, ECS, you don't need to manage all the clusters. You don't need to manage all infrastructures. It's been already uh, managed by Fargate. So as you can see here in this diagram, if you want to have a Docker uh, uh, Docker architecture, you need to build a few EC2 instances, right? This is using Amazon ECS, and then you need to manage your each of these cluster and EC2 fleets. So with Amazon ECS, it can help you to schedule and orchestrate with the cluster manager and placement engine. But with Fargate, you don't need to worry anymore about those cluster of EC2 instance fleet. So it's just as simple that you push your image containers to the, uh, to, to the ECR repositories 
and then you ask Fargate to update the surface, and done. So this is uh, uh, how if I know there's been a lot of confusion between Fargate and uh, ECS and EKS. So I hope this diagram will help you understand better. So if you are using Docker and you want to use Docker, you can use Amazon ECS. If you want to use Kubernetes, you can use Amazon EKS. Okay, so these are two the difference. And when you already chose your orchestration tool, now you need to define your launch type. There are two launch types. The first one is the EC2 launch type, and the second is AWS Fargate. With the EC2 launch type, it gives you a granular control of your servers, so you can customize your applications of or your systems according to any kind of your needs, probably like compliance or uh, additional security. But if you don't need to have a granular control, on your EC2 instance, you can use Fargate. So we have a lot of our customers that have been uh, adopting Amazon ECS. You can see from Atroll, uh, Adobe, uh, Mirab.com, and also Buzzfeed. So Buzzfeed have been building a platform on Amazon ECS for years. They have currently 400 services currently deployed with 50,000 deployments, 80 container instances, six clusters which span across two regions. Okay? So we, s we already uh, see the benefits of using Amazon ECS, EKS, and Fargate. Going back to microservices, when you're dealing at scale, like what Buzzfeed already done, sometimes it's really, really painful. Okay, so how many of you have been uh, successfully deploying your microservices only in one single operations? See, so the problem with microservices, which is really good, but when we're doing at scale, sometimes it gets hard. How to do how to do auto skill, and then how to do the surface discovery. So there's a lot of things, and also how to coordinate microservices. So, and then this comes to my mind. I know that microservices really good, but when I want to do it using containers, does it mean it needs to have more containers and more operations? I don't want that. I want peace of mind. So that's why in this uh, session, I want to share about how you can have more containers with a less operations. Okay, so the first one is I'm going to share a few uh, advanced patterns. I hope it's going to be useful for you. The first one is continuous deployment. With uh, microservices, you can use uh, a set of our offerings, starting from AWS code commit. And then you can commit your code over there, which will trigger the pipelines on AWS code pipeline. And then the best thing is, with AWS code pipeline, you can have a parallel processing. It, can, uh, it will trigger the task on AWS code build to push the image to Amazon ECR, and then uh, at the same time, it can tell the AWS cloud formation to update the surface to Amazon ECS. And then the Amazon ECS will get the latest repository on Amazon ECR, getting the image or the latest version, and take it back and update the surface. Okay, so this is uh, one pattern of uh, of using microservice on Amazon. The second pattern is automatic surface scaling. So I know sometimes it's hard to scale your containers, but with Amazon ECS, you can easily scale your containers. 
let's say that you have a uh, task A, test task B in one availability zone, and you have another task, uh, task C in availability zone B. With Amazon ECS, you can actually trigger CloudWatch to scale your uh, uh, to scale your uh, your containers. Also, if you want to have your own policy, you can do it as well. Let's say you want to have uh, uh, automatic scaling when one of your uh, task instance reaches seventy percent of CPU threshold, and then when the request comes in and your task uh, containers is, is have handling all these requests and it reached 70% of CPU threshold, 